Cam Han from Jersey Hemp, and I'd like to talk to you about reintroducing hemp to Jersey, which we've now officially done for our first commercial harvest this year. Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction of who we are, what we do, cultivating and processing the benefits of hemp to the island, and going forward. This is a team. Uh, it was founded by uh, Dave, Kevin, and Blair. Uh, they were firemen. And they first came across hemp when researching fire combustible materials uh, at the fire service and for uh, buildings and for making better buildings, less toxic air for the lot safer for the firemen when they're entering it. It burns a lot slower, uh, so you've got more time to get out of the house if your house should be on fire. It's so myself and Craig Dempster is our newest team member. Uh, he's the commercial uh, director. Helping with all the finance side of things. Our journey, uh, we really started, the uh, first journey started in 2013, so a long time ago. Uh, again, when the, David and that as firemen were researching uh, non combustible materials, uh, they came across hempcrete, and uh, it, it just seemed to have a lot more benefits over a lot of the modern, uh, highly toxic chemicals that we produce in houses today. Uh, down to 2016, uh, they first met with Jersey Business, Nick Steele, who really set us on the path that we went on today. Thank you very much. Um, we met with the Environment Department, Scott Meadows, and um, other part people at the uh, States of Jersey. We're really thankful to the support and benefit they've given us. Uh, we uh, later did a feasibility study and formed a partnership in preparation for the 2017 trial crop. Uh, we had two Virgis in 2017. Uh, we've planted four different varieties just to see the feasibility of how it would grow in the island. And it grew above expectations. We had yields uh, about 30% extra from what they expect in, in the UK. Uh, we produced the seeds into comrie oil and protein. Uh, I'll get a bit more to that later. This year we've just rented Warwick Farm. This is our headquarters now up on Greens Road. Uh, we have a three year cultivation and processing license, and we've completed the first commercial harvest of hemp in Jersey for over 100 years. Uh, we'll be pressing the seeds later on this year, and uh, hopefully, beginning of January, we'll have our, our, our own cooking oil ready. Cultivating and processing. So, what is hemp? Hemp is a variety of cannabis, uh, it's a controlled substance in most of the world. Uh, it's also a relative of hops, so what we put into beer, another favourite intoxicating uh, drink. Uh, the hemp grows a dioecious plant, so it's got senses on a male and a female plant. The top one is the female and it has a, a large flower structure uh, where the seeds will, will develop within. The males usually grow taller than the, the females and they grow a little bit earlier. It's white wind pollinated so they want to rise above the canopy and uh, disperse the pollen in time for the females to arrive. Its traditional uses uh, fiber is one of the strongest natural fibers we have. Uh, it's very highly adapted to environmental conditions. We can grow it on uh, poor quality soils, high quality soils and we can still get a, a, a useful uh, and productive crop. <coughs> it's also very stress tolerant. We required no irrigation this year. Uh, with all the droughts, we, we, I think we had some of the greenest fields in the island. Uh, hemp is a form of cannabis, and under the Misuse of Drugs Act, Jersey Law 1978, it's a controlled substance. The license has to be uh, in possession to cultivate and to possess the, 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 the plant. Uh, this is issued by the States of Jersey Health and Social Services and we have a three year industrial license to process uh, and cultivate the hemp. Uh, we have obligations as part of that license. We have to register the fields in which all the hemp is grown in. We have to register the end products. We are allowed to only cultivate EU certified varieties of hemp which have less than 0.3% tetrahydrocannabinol which is the psychoactive component of the, of the plant. We're not allowed to plant near residential areas of schools. We have to report vandals and vandalism and theft. We're not
not allowed to process or remove the flowers, and we are subject to periodic testing. Uh, the cultivation season for 2018, we focused primarily on one variety this year, Phenola. It's a seed variety. We planted 270 virgies, and um, it's a normal sort of uh, annual rotation of, of plants. Uh, we start sowing between April and um, we can sow as late as June. Uh, the cultivation uh, takes place uh, three to four months of, over the summer. And then seed harvest, which starts in August to October. Uh, we have a limitation of we've got eight hours to get seed from the field back to the processing plant and uh, otherwise it starts to ferment and starts to go off. Uh, the stalks are then cut and left direct in the fields. This is estimated to produce, but to return about 60% of the nutrients to the soil. Uh, it takes about two to three weeks uh, of, um, to do. And then we bale it, and it takes two to three days and we return that to the processing. This year we harvested 40 tons of seeds, uh, about 30% extra than what we were, had budgeted for, so our silo was full and overflowing. Uh, we also harvested about 100 tons of stalks, and we'll be looking to processing them in the, in the coming, coming year. This is a bit of an example process flow of the uh, um, hemp. When we plant it and combine it, it gets split and harvested into seeds, stems, and flowers. At the minute, flowers have to be returned to the soil. Uh, we're not allowed to process them. Well, our main focus and the uh, equipment that we've been setting up is all involved in the seeds and so the cold pressing. Uh, the cold pressing separates the oil from the seed and you're left remaining uh, what is called cake. Uh, this is high in protein and it's about 50% protein, 50% carbohydrate. <coughs> we can mill this to a certain grade and this goes to make uh, protein powders or protein bars, protein shapes. The oil that comes off gets separated from that, goes through a filter, and it goes into bottling and this is used in, as, a, as a cooking oil replacement for olive oil. The stems go through uh, what's called a decorticator machine and this separates the fiber from the shiv and these all have their own end uses as well. The equipment setup. So this arrived in early August, a little bit late. It arrived flat back, uh, instructions in German, and we were just left to assemble it on our own. So 800,000 pieces later, and we ended up with the silo and the dryer and the rotary drum cleaner. So this is the, uh, the first step in the process, processing the seed to get it into a, a position where we can store it. Once the seed is stored, it then goes into the cold press filters and uh, packaging line. We're really in the process of setting all of this up, waiting for permissions and uh, equipment arrival. The products you can get from hemp, there's really five main parts of the plant that all uh, can produce something. We, we try not to waste any of the plant. The seeds get milled into the oil and the protein. The oil in itself can go into cooking oils, it can go into cosmetics, and it can go into food supplements. It's one of the most nutritious and healthiest uh, oils on the planet, better than olive oil. It can also be grown locally. Uh, protein is a very high uh, protein content of the seeds. Uh, this is made into protein bars, it can be made into hemp milk, where they uh, absorb it into water overnight. Uh, create a lactose. Uh, non-dairy version of milk. Uh, the flowers, the flowers are the, again the controversial plot, but they have their own uses. They can be made into fragrances, uh, nutraceuticals, medicines, or sometimes just juiced like you would a, a wheat grass. Fiber, the fiber goes for the insulation, you can go to biocomposite plastics, and you have the more traditional pulp and paper and textile manufacturing out of it. The shiv, which is the inner woody core of the plant, the, the xylem that transports the water up to the leaves. Uh, this is used as animal bedding uh, or hemp creek. Uh, it can also be used as a, a replacement for cocoa in hydroponic cultivation medium. Um, what we'd like to see is a, a, 
We, at the minute, we're multi-cropping, so we follow the potatoes in the same year. We can uh, follow them annually, uh, but ideally for him, <laughs> missing a peak, uh, is a five-year rotation. So we like to, uh, when you introduce a plant to a new environment, it will flourish for the first three years, and then really on the sort of the fourth year, we're going to end up with an increase in disease and pests. So we'd like to try and avoid that. We'd like to think of the future and of where we're going to be in five to ten years' time. And we see that hemp could fit into a perfect rotation plan within the island, uh, following or preceding the potatoes, the dairy, uh, another crop, barley, wheat, maize, and then maybe leave a field fallow for a year. This would work ideally for us. Closing the loop. So we have a mini, this is an example for animal bedding. Uh, what we'd like to see is we cultivate the hemp and the shiv to produce, provide animal bedding. The animal bedding uh, can go to stables and dairy industry. Uh, we can then recollect that from them and we can plant that back into the soil and start to close the loop of uh, cultivation, uh, collecting nutrients from the animal waste and putting that back into the soil. The benefits, the environmental benefits of hemp. Uh, it's really beneficial for the soil, the water, the air and uh, overall ecology. The thick canopy, starting with ecology, it grows very thick and it provides great uh, habitat for small wildlife, voles, masses, uh, birds, and uh, then on top of that you get the predatory birds that uh, hang around. CO2 sequestration, so we clean the air, one hectare of hemp will absorb about 400 tonnes of uh, carbon dioxide in the growing season, that's in the growing season of about four to six months. Second only to bamboo, I think. Uh, we absorb excess nitrogen from the soil, so we can plant around uh, delicate water catchment areas and we can prevent the excess nitrogen left over from uh, agriculture and prevent that from getting into our aquatic ecosystems. It also has a long tap root, so it's very good for aerating the soil and uh, picking up nutrients from the bedrock. We use all organic methods in our farming, although the land is not always designated organic. Uh, hemp is also used to remediate soils, so if we have contaminated soils with pollutants, heavy metals or whatever, we can use the hemp to absorb that out of the soil and we can safely dispose of that either by locking it up in a building or maybe incinerating it at appropriate temperatures to ensure that it's broken down into its constituent forms. It can also be beneficial for the eon, cannabinoids in the flowers, which we have to put back into the, the earth, the natural insecticides. The, we, we envisage that this could help with the eon population, more experimentation required. Uh, the economic benefits of the island. So we don't do all of this ourselves. We, we outsource most of the, the uh, services. We um, rent the land off uh, existing companies, the Jersey Royals and various other people. Uh, we have brought in the equipment from um, England that we could have sourced locally in the island, so a mower, uh, a few different things, in the, including all the setup equipment that you see. And this is just a lot of people we sort of have used throughout the season to help us in, in any aspect that we can in the farming. Going forward, we see future products. Uh, we're currently working with the zoo to see if we can get a, what's called a zootritional program. We'd like to see a, a hemp-based protein bar for captive apes, uh, hopefully supplementing some of the nutritional diet that they, they pack in captivity. We'd also like to see hemp houses. This is what we started on our journey, and we're still progressing with this. There's a lot of research and development and rules and regulations to get through with building regulations and that. Uh, we're hoping, if everything goes well by 2020, we'll have the first head house built in Jersey. This will be completely renewable, carbon negative, and if you don't like it, we can churn it back into the soil and grow another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bioplastics, biofuels is always a big one. We'd like to see all our being farm machinery run off biofuels. All part of the, the, the plant can be turned into bioethanol or bio, uh, biodiesel and we can start to, to uh, power our machinery and power our farm equipment using it. And obviously medicines can be made out of the, the plants and maybe in the future this is uh, a, a way we look to go. 
So 2019 beyond, we've taken over Warwick Farm, it's in a bit of a state. Uh, so we'll be renovating this. We'd like to turn this into a center of excellence for cannabis and hemp research, investigating the possibilities of using it for buildings, for bioplastics, for bioresins, and any other crazy ideas anyone might have out there. Uh, we don't use organic, uh, sorry, we don't use inorganic pesticides, so we, we, we follow that method and that's very important to us, this is driven to us by the consumer, and uh, we have to follow that method. So how can you help if anyone down here has more land and they would like to grow hemp on it, please get in contact, we'll be looking for more land next year. We'll be prioritizing organic land for our seed cultivation and uh, we're sort of working out uh, exactly how much land we're going to need for fiber production to um, build, a, build this building in 2020, so a bit of quantification there. And thank you, that's it.